Here we go. Oh, no. Hold this on. is like the rocket launch. This is it. Hold on. No, <laughs> Who can make it to World Night first? Hold on. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo Lama 11. Welcome back to Legacy Weekly. Our designer is The Mima. Our writer is Noteworthy59. My name is Super Side Kian. And my name is Matthias Stinson. The trader hit hunt has finally concluded with borderline cheaters getting what they deserved and secret tactics being revealed. Without any further ado, here are the events and highlights of the Legacy SMP this week. Starting off at Logical Geek Boy's giant rainbow ring, which he collaborated on with Sean Bits to complete. All the concrete and stained glass is in place and the individual island builders can now move in. These are filled with concrete and uh, also some glass of all the colors of the rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> Logic's secret weapon in the headhunt turns out to be breeding traitor llamas over and over again, then funneling them back into the killing chamber to execute Order 66. Under the grass pyramid he builds a nano wheat farm and Minecraft cycler to avoid the storm of llama saliva, keeping the original mating pair after the end of it all. I did do something humane, I saved, I saved no problema and banana llama, they, they came through the system. After all, the productive participants have gathered in the trader graveyard. Towers of severed heads shoot past the clouds, with Logix hitting build limit with half a stack to spare. Solidarity and Germ had apparently picked up on his breeding tactic but started too late, and Sly Slime had remained faithful to his passive stone platform to get his skulls. While Sausage and Germ had employed their skin change kill strategy, it still landed them the near bottom of the visible ranks. Just goes to show that the cheaters never win. I just gotta say, I appreciate that you guys went through this effort <laughs> and still had less than Slice Life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the crew say they're GG's and foreshadow a logical geek boy headhunt after the king takes home the diamonds, then realize that a raid has somehow been triggered at Lime's base. They have a blast and battle out the raiders, giving us yet another demonstration of the legacy SMP's friendship, fun, and unity. Oh, what is <laughs> uh Oh, that's me! <laughs> they brought in the Air Force! <laughs> no! Sly Slime returns from the fray as the unofficial fair play prize holder, working out the kinks of his airship iron farm. The build gets some quirky features, such as a shulker box swirl in the center of the propellers and end rods so you kind of get this little kind of almost flame-like feeling from them they're pretty that's pretty nice with the end of one server wide game another must begin and Vigo Man collaborates with Gemini Tay on creating the diamond monster inside the elegant red dragon's mouth players will toss in named diamonds to keep it alive once the literal light in the monster's eyes has gone out it is dead and the last one defeated before that happens to get the entire prize pool don't start unleashing your hate comments, everybody. There are noticeable differences. Players have no way of knowing how long the dragon has left to live, and they have no idea who else has fed it, how long ago. There are no ranks either, so there's a much greater motive to keep the drain on their ender chests open. So as long as it's alive, you can feed it diamonds, and if you come here and it's dead, just call me or jam. After wiring up the redstone guts of the game, Vigo builds a proper dockside on the stone wall, complete with piles of crates, plots of plant life, and a large loading crane. Uh, but it still kind of looks functional and, I don't know, usable, and it kind of just fits with the entire theme here. Across the street in the shopping district, Python GB constructs a small shack offering regular, low tier, and high tier enchanted bows and crossbows. Customers can also place orders for custom crafted versions of either, or relieving themselves of the labor that is crafting dispensers. Crafting dispensers in Minecraft, it is a huge pain in the butt, isn't it? Because you have to use uh, one bow at a time. Python takes action to bring his wealth up to par with the other legates, going on a major caving session for an entire episode. He heads in with a goal of a stack of diamond ore and comes out with 70 making his ender chest just a little bit less empty. Which is what, 152. So we've got 152 diamonds on us now, my friends. About a stack and a half. Mythical Sausage builds a new shop of his own, a boxy hillside store made out of the very terracotta itself. Three new AG quests to undertake are a creeper head, a live ravager, and an enchanted golden apple, the last of which Pearlescent Moon has since completed. 
With the blue wool provided and some leftover dirt, he builds up the already detailed outline for Solidarity's Castle Keep, nestled neatly into one side of the area. Um, I had a lot more uh, that I needed. Probably a full shulker box in order to complete this whole thing, maybe even a little more. In need of bricks, he heads to Chimney Swift's base and checks out the villager barracks, the black room, and the mesmerizing fog effect floor. Tim himself, meanwhile, gets to work on a new Tron-inspired skyscraper shaped like an upright hockey stick. He also showcases his squid farm and crude blue farm which he mentions are something like a toe dipped into the world of redstone mechanics. I'm so proud of this because you guys, if you've watched me for a while, you know I'm not a big redstone guy. I'm actually learning more about redstone now. A white themed storage room complete with its own glass illusion is constructed at the far end of Jim's black box, featuring multi-item filters and self-lighting lamps under the floor. For this base, it's drawn all the way down. And if it's still, if there's an item that I put in the system, oop, lights are closing up. If it still doesn't have a home in the system, then it comes into this outflow. S Major gets up to storage construction of his own, transporting clutter from his medieval home to the fantasy castle at long last. After constructing the rack of sign-labeled chests, he goes on a late visit to the trader graveyard and an early tour of Vigo and Germ's bases, admiring the amount of time his server mates have to build amazing things and slice off the heads of nomadic villagers. Just the level of detail is insane. I need to learn how to do all this, like the pathing and the terraforming and such. Another competitor who pretty much gave up on the trader competition, Evomance, cleans out the remainder of his cluttered chests and moves into his netherwart basement. In the fantasy district, he levels out a hill and builds his first orc outpost. The bone roof hut features a crude fire pit and carpets on top of fence gates as vents. Fire pit. This is, after all, probably a community structure, this one. Places for them to sit with these stripped dark oak logs. Jermsey Boy contributes his entry to a different competition, constructing a smaller version of his Tuscan Tower around the Nether Roof portal. The Overworld City's main hill gets a weathered path, stables, and several new houses down the slope leading to the main town. I do want to add in a lot more details around here, like some trees and bushes and these, like, grassy parts over here. And lastly, there's Solidarity for whom Achelius builds the requested item sorter, but with a twist. Each time blocks are loaded in, a hailstorm of eggs erupt from the ceiling, showering solidarity in his worst nightmare. I set five, four, three. Oh, wait, wait, what is that? What is that? He goes on a general look around of the latest pop-ups and ponders what to do next on Sausage's provided keep. I still need to know where the entrance should be, if it should be down there, or it should be here. And that's going to do it for this recap. Our designer is The Mimo, our writer is Noteworthy59, my name is Superside Kian. And my name is Matthias Stinson. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next Saturday on Legacy Weekly.